bringen. Alright, so we're gonna be playing Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse. And we're gonna be playing the 100% category, which the goal of this is to collect 53 hippo heads along with beating the story. Um, we're gonna play it on the easy difficulty and starting in three, two, one. Alright, so Stubbs was somebody and we see it in the cutscene, we don't, or we skip all past that stuff there in the beginning, um, but what happens in the beginning is Stubbs is given a shallow grave and he pops back up in the middle of this grand opening for this awesome new town called Punchbowl, Pennsylvania, the fictional town. Um, right as we pop up, it's right in, in the middle of that couple's dinner, or well, picnic lunch, and uh... And the guy accuses us of stealing his hot dog. We would never do that. Look at us. We don't even have like a full stomach. Literally. So we offer him a handshake and the guy obviously just pushes out the wrong direction and gets scratched and uh, feels bad, man. But his girlfriend went ahead and told the police on us. Um, in the interim, we're going to go ahead and grab this hippo head, though, running over to the side here. Um, this is the first out of seven in this area. We grab that one and then immediate about face and run the other way. Now Guidebot goes ahead and gives you a general tutorial of the game. We don't really have to listen to her past the pointy cues. So we run past her. Even though the game says stop here. And instead, we're going to go talk to these police officers. Since that girl told him that we killed that guy, we need to go explain our side of the story. Um, what they don't know is Stubbs is a great salesman, but as well, he's a great massage therapist. Uh, before he got a shallow grave, Stubbs was just a uh, a jack of all trades, if you will, going at every different job. So he's pitching his case right now, and Guidebot's trying to say, look, he's a new guy, he's not bad, he's not bad at all. And this guy, he caved in, he said, all right, I'll take a back massage. The other guy's about to cave in too because he saw his, uh, his partner do it. Perfectly acceptable, you know, it's the 50s. Favors to get out of jail is totally fine. So we're gonna go up to this guy and give him a back massage. Alright, you saw he moved. He moved. This guy... Alright, oh jeez. Um, clipped him a little, but either way, they're gonna take a nap. Really relaxed, as you could tell. They fell right to sleep. Oh, there we go. So they called in reinforcements. They said they had great massages, and now they brought the whole gang here. Now, Guidebot's gonna introduce us to our next ability, which is the zombie gas, or the fart. What you do there is you just literally do an AOE explosion around you and it disorients everybody. So we have some personal assistants now to help with our massage therapy school, but clearly they're not good at it. They just bit that guy's brains. Very unfortunate. Not a common massage technique. Um, oh my God. So did he awful, awful. Um, but now we're going to have a little gang of zombies starting to build and that's how the game progresses. You give people massages and they progressively become zombies. Guidebot's teaching us little mechanics of the game at this point, so we just learned how to shove zombies away. And now we're going to learn how to uh, whistle and bring them in. As soon as you get the little prompt at the bottom, you can put, uh, you can hit your action key and whistle at them. And then you just push them away. You don't want them to get in Guidebot's pathing because that slows her down. We need this point, all of these initial segments to go pretty quick because this is the only like really scripted portion with Guidebot. Now, the police obviously, they don't mind us anymore. They're all very thrilled with our services. So Guidebot's going to go ahead and let us in town. What we're going to do while she's walking over to the door is grab this hippo head behind the obelisk over here. That's number two of seven. Then we just run on down. Probably a few dozen like game ideas. Now this is one of the few commentaries in the game that actually will persist through the uh, through the cutscene, which is very strange. But a little, there's a couple areas that have quirks to them. Remember, we had a big meeting and there was a vote, and this was the only idea that everybody seemed to vote for. 
If you hit the tree there, it'll bounce you down, which is uh, nice and quick. Now, this area, we go in like a, a big C to get all of our hippo heads. This will be number three. And then we immediately go backtrack. Now, you might be saying, Vel, why don't you go through those barricades? They're nice and open. Well, silly, they're barricades. You're not allowed to. But because of that, we have to just go ahead and walk around. They let us run the other edges of it, just not through the barricades. And then we're coming up on number four. Now, Solansky actually was showing me a, um, a little bit of routing that seems neat. Uh, a few big design I think I missed the jump input. But you can jump there right as you're doing it. I missed it. Uh, there's going to be another unskippable cutscene after that second tree in our row on the left. Once we pass that, we're going to try to issue another. Um, and, uh, our and then we have some clean cut area that we'll have to hit for hippo head number six and number seven. That looked like he came out of a world ah! And we also tried I'm like hitting it right as the fade. Trying to I hit it in protest, apparently. <laughs> um, but no, I, I hit it right as the fade ins happening. So like what I think is the right moment, I have to go like a half a beat sooner. Yeah, there was this like, great artist. Uh, his name was uh, Raid Ba. Who Grab that. I'm already a little behind. I can tell by the uh, developer commentary. Uh, what we had at the beginning, which stuck, was the idea that it takes place over the course of just one day. Yes. Yeah, starts in the morning, ends at night. It'd be nice if you could yeah. somehow keep your it's run right cool there. It's all cyclic, where you start right here in, in front of the, in the, in the, the main drag, downtown punch bowl, and it ends right here. That's true. Yeah, it was... Uh, Almost planned that way. Yeah, there's lots of bookends like that. Uh, I wonder how many people will Thank you. discover them. Hmm. I wonder if there's a prize. So at this point, we have five of the hippo heads. We're going to go ahead behind the city hall here. And we're going to grab number six over on the edge. And it's going to pop up here in just a moment. Uh, and then we got to go run on the lawn. Now, we're going to have one unskippable cutscene come up, and then we're going to have the end trigger that will avoid like the plague. If we hit the end trigger, we accidentally invalidate the run. You don't want to do it. Yeah, Stubbs changed a lot. The character of Stubbs and... Uh, God, I'm so scared. <laughs> Even though you showed me where I can go, Solansky, it still scares me. Um, so we're going to go over here. All right, that's still much faster, just cutting out that extra angling. Yeah. And that's number seven. I, I think we... Well, yeah, that was another idea we had sort of early. So right as you spawn into this level, you get a new vehicle and six hippo heads to get. Uh, the new vehicle is the Sodomobile. We're going to drive it. It's best horizontal. However, as you see, it gets a little unruly. Gosh, that was slow. And you hop back in. Patrick Curry, the lead designer on Stubbs. I am Matt Sell, the writer for Stubbs. And uh, this is a level that Matt and I uh, kind of did together. Um, Matt did... You know, so right here, we can actually get through the door, ideally. Yeah, buddy. Just by wedging into the corner. And then um, the door actually puts you at a position where it thinks you're on the other side to some extent and allows this door to open. Normally, we're supposed to go to the control room, which is our next stop. So that's hippo head number two. To how kind of the world works and brain eating. And this is the first level where you're almost guaranteed to die time or two. Oh. At the beginning of the All right, that vehicle gave us a drive. That's right. The lovely, the, 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 we got, one might say. We took a trip on that one. That's no good. And, uh, but we just keep on running through. Luckily, the vehicle didn't land on us because that would have actually been bad. This uh, isn't ideal, but it's not awful. How those two uh, came together. And oh no! Perhaps you'll all read it someday. There's a weird bit of jump input. Stubs the zombie. A tale of two zombies, or something like that. All right, and that's hippo head number three. That's all three for this first area. Now we have to go and uh, move into the next segment. This level was 
initializing the chase between stubs and you know i suppose in theory we could just get rid of hitting that button entirely and then just do the uh the lozy skip that would shave some time interesting to consider what we're gonna do at this point is drive over here you can't why can't you Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you can't get back outside. Um, That's true. The door locks on you. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead to this Mr. Fix-It bot and grab number four. Also, uh, just because some people might not, uh, it may not be the most oh. obvious thing in the game. Uh, you might be wondering why Skegness and his, his men. Not awful, but not great. Like a barbershop quartet. Uh, the reason is that Skegness... So at this point, Guidebot's going to introduce us our uh, second ability of the game, which is a gut grenade. This is very, very, very similar to the Halo Blue Sticky Grenade. Um, being built off of the Halo engine, there are similarities throughout the game. Very, uh, um, We have a vehicle glitch that's very similar to Halo. We have a checkpoint manipulation at points. And we have sticky grenades. What more could you ask for? If it was the Halo 2 engine and we could get some, like, super jumps, that actually would be more that I could ask for. But we can't. <laughs> this is on the Halo CE original engine. The developers actually talk about it a little bit in the game, um, but not much. I think they have one segment where they talk about being on Halo engine. Okay, that was actually not bad to get through there. We lost our run though, which isn't ideal. Oh. Come on. So at this point, it's just really maneuvering around the AI. They can be a pain, they can be a, a blessing. It really depends on how they want to bob and weave. So we got to try our best to react accordingly. So we're going to grab uh, hippo head number five as we get over to the exit of this area. All right, there it is, number five. Ideally, that guy gets knocked back with your grenade so he's not in the, the road like that or in the uh, the route. But, oof, oof unfortunate. You can get a really bad timing like that and it messes it up. You can confirm the game runs on a 3080 also high. Yo, that's awesome. <laughs> Thing's probably a powerhouse on it. You can never hit your grenade inputs now. <laughs> Not without limiting the FPS. Now you gotta figure out how to force ray tracing. Stubs will be beautiful. It'll look like Maggie Monday. All right, pop that guy, and then we get to run past. We're gonna go this way. Oh God! Ah, uh, ah! Uh, the cat is sitting on the mouse, and it's moving the camera. <laughs> That's number six. That's the other uh, major character that we introduce at the very end of this level. Is Otis Monday. Uh, oh, that was actually kind of cool. Has a sort of an epic conspiracy theory, which we couldn't divulge. All right, so now we're in the slammer. There's two hippo heads in the slammer. We're gonna go ahead and get them real quick. Like, I'm gonna grab this one right here, and then the next one comes after uh, we go through a cutscene. And I'm a designer here at White Load. Um, we're here to talk about the level that we lovingly know as the police. Three different generations of GPU and never had a single issue with this game. Interesting because it's one of the very first levels that we Yeah, honestly, I don't know. I can't really fault anybody for having a problem because it is known as a problematic game, but um for installation. But luckily I guess my install video and the general troubleshooting we've all done in Discord has helped everybody out well enough. <laughs> but it can definitely be frustrating. Um now at this point in the game though, we're gonna run through all the uh the police station until we get to this gauntlet here the gauntlet wants us to go ahead and uh and kill 15 of these officers before they send in reinforcements so we're gonna go ahead and uh show them who's boss and so we 
tried to. Uh, That's two, three. To teaching that to the player. And uh, you know, still being fun. Five. And, uh, what's six. About that is that the first thing that was really working. Oh, that guy got stuck. So that's only seven. Gameplay. Eight. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the developer talking, you can't really tell how many are being killed by other people. Ten. Yeah, we've tested a lot over time, though, so it makes it kind of fun. The next step is going to definitely be emulation. I think, I think emulation is the key for future stubs um, for everybody. Wow, I was way off count. I counted to 10 and then killed one guy more and uh, the door opened. <laughs> so I was off by four. One of my more favorite portions of the game. There's so many different ways to pull that off. You can go through it and... All right, so this is our next ability, the disembodied hand. What we do here is run up to the second tile, jump out the, the gate, the game wants you to go through all that stuff there, like go through the tunnels or the ventilation. I don't like doing that. Instead, we do prison break. And with prison break, all you gotta do is just run up into the corner with the hand and then wedge it through, spin the camera, and somehow or another you can hit the button from the other side. Now at that point, this is a scripted event. You're supposed to come through that vent. We just jam uh, jumped our way over through this way. It's faster to jump on any character, it seems like, especially if they don't have a run animation, like a disembodied hand. Or a prisoner with a disembodied hand on their head. That's hippo head number two of two. Now we Gondom style our way to victory. We're gonna eat this guy's brains because they're juicy. A scientist is always good eating. It is interesting to see what works for sure. Microsoft Flight Simulator, huh? That makes sense. That always seems like an intensive game if you were to ask me. Flight Sims definitely seem like they're cool, especially if you're dedicated to it. Um, like have the rig and everything. So with stubs, we grabbed the, the gut grenade there from the uh, scientist first, and then we grabbed a poor guy's arm. Um, he didn't need that arm anyway. As you saw, he let us just run right through his post. Not a big deal. Um, ooh, that. Um, the arm is like an insurance policy. The gut grenade is really what you need. Ah, there we go. Oh, that was a really bad grenade. Good thing we got insurance. Um, this is still gonna be bad. All right, so we lost 20 seconds there, but really not that crazy. This level doesn't have any hippo heads in it where we're at now. This is just a dance level. Luckily, oh wow, nice little gold there. Luckily the developers assume PC players have two left thumbs and we can't dance. So we just have to right click and we're <laughs> it just pushes us through. As long as you fail first. If you don't fail, you can't right click. You gotta fail. But then at that point, we go through the parking garage. And Andrew Monday over the loudspeaker, the mayor of the town, just said that it's safest to go through here to get up to the uh, to the punch bowl mall. And I mean, we're just a gentle massage therapist. We have no harm to these citizens. We are averse to combat, as you can see. Luckily, now that we have this disembodied hand ability, we're able to throw that at targets and uh, either possess them, as you saw with the uh, the prisoner, or just grab hippo heads independently. And 
then we go over to guide bot. That's hippo head number one of four. Now at this point, Guidebot's introducing us to our fourth and final ability before we stop seeing her for a, a fair bit of the game. Um, she shows up in cutscenes, but we don't see those cutscenes. Um, at this point, though, she's showing us the disembodied, uh, or not disembodied, the head roll ability. We're not going to really use that right now, though, but you do bowl it like a bowling ball. Um, the game wants you to kill all those guys that we just ran past, but that's just too long. We're not going to bother. Instead, we'll just run to this elevator, and that'll take us to the bank. Eat this guy's brains. I'm actually just going to drop down and run. I think we, we did a pretty good job. Yeah, this is actually the, my favorite level to play through right now. Good job, Alan. Well, now we just got to go right over here. Oh, well, I didn't really do that much. Just those goals. Go ahead, number two. All right, so um, what, this is actually one of my favorite levels, too. What I like about it is, like uh, the police station, you've got more than one way to... All right, now this is an example of the, like, save checkpoint triggers. That we're trying to avoid like that. So the game assumes that if you got a save point there that you were out of combat, you killed everybody and they need to send in reinforcements. Instead, we didn't do all that. We just killed three guys. Ran past and then just avoided eye contact. Stubbs is shy. He's bashful. Um, as a shy guy, we're going to go ahead and run to the movies next. Go hide in the dark. See this movie called Rebel Without a Pulse. <laughs> Why does he have an axe? <laughs> That's awesome. So, what was also neat about this was that in the early incarnations of it, you could see oh. from inside the mall. That was awkward. <laughs> so, you throw your hand down there so that way you can go ahead and get that hippo head. That's number three of four. And then we go ahead and run on over to the end here. Um, I'm still not sure what the most ideal route is. To me, it still feels like Filbert's is faster. I did one practice where I went through to, uh, cutlets and such. No, you do. I've been physically under them and had the camera turned up. Um, maybe it depends on the hippo head, potentially. But, um, there, there's definitely been instances where I've felt that you need to do it. and suddenly you have to fight. And it's a pretty tough fight. If you, if you play this on Insane, it's it's pretty insane. I usually let my zombies do all the work for me there. I can't imagine doing the Insane 100 percent route. That would be crazy. <laughs> like just imagining that feels like it would be painful. It would be insane. Correct. That's satisfying. There's a certain cathartic power. <laughs> so for whatever reason, if you stop and eat these guys' brains, the, the other part of this it, um, is the promenade. they like send in reinforcements at a weird spot. Area, and then there's a promenade. I don't want that. The promenade was just basically, the idea is it's this long um, outdoor mall of stores and shops. And movie oh, no, we still got the reinforcements. Those guys only spawn, I think, if you get um, if you get found or noticed, what I maybe. I always thought was cool about the promenade is it has a slow upward progress to it. So you eventually get to this point where there's this ramp fight. And the ramp fight in there, um, we actually initiates from... That should be good. Our, one, one of our old demo levels when we were first trying to... Nice. We could have had a gold there, but I'll take it. Right, the Quaker State of Regulars. Now, who's with me? That was Otis Monday. He is the culprit to put you into your shallow grave. You find that out through some cutscenes a bit later, but... Spoiler. But no, you, uh, you don't even get to see it, unfortunately, with all the, the splits that we do. So, the, uh, the way it ends up being, you'll see it more in the next area is there's a love interest otis's daughter and now she's pretty pivotal um being the uh maggie monday and her son andrew monday is the mayor and founder i'm gonna skip that guy 
And I think going over here is slightly faster than going from the inner. Oh man, I got absolutely shanked by that tree. No. Oh, that was kind of fast. Trees are our enemy. Stubbs be vegan, but he still hates trees. All right, now we got that. There's four in total at Punch Bowl Mall, and that's number 104. The other one is on the polar opposite side. This used to be a portion of the mall. And the mall got so huge. So we hit that guy. And then I think what we do is one of the artists here at Wide Load, I came in on Scratch you. Polish it up. Try to get it looking good for the kids at home. And then do this. Uh, when, uh, I think that's the cleanest way to do it. Ideally, Stubbs doesn't take too much damage. For a very long time. It was like the zombie should get up soon, and then I should heal. Nice. Stubbs is healed, mostly. And then we grab this hippo head. I didn't get to pick that battle. Unfortunately, I had to just throw it. And what we're going to do here... Mon 3. Come on 3. There we go. Need to have three gut grenades. That's all. As far as you can see. And then when you get inside, you're, you've got this, this scope that you look up, you see the sky, you see everything. And then we go in between these potted plants and get number three. A real hassle with the portal trying to make all that, that work, but I think, I think it came out pretty well. There is the, the boss fight, which uh, came out pretty, you know, it came out pretty interesting. It came out pretty well. It, it was um, initially a, a fight that involved a, a lot more zombies. And, a lot and you grab that hippo head. That's number four of four. Now, Stubbs is getting punched right now, so we got to hurry. But it doesn't seem like he's getting punched too hard. In fact, oh my god! Kill shot. Now, by getting the security to come through the uh, the musk ox there, what we're actually oh, what we're actually doing is forcing um, this boss to spawn, and uh, that allows us to get right in there uh, as the person that we possess. Unfortunately, that one gut grenade missed, so cost me 15 seconds. Have I done 100% insane yet? No. That will drive me 100% insane. There. I'm Doug Sartman. I'm the level designer. So in the first corner of the of the of the all the house Otis here. We have three different hippo heads to get, so we're gonna grab that one and that one. I don't know how many people notice. Uh, and where's this next one? There it is. That's the first three in the first corner, and now we gotta skedaddle on over to the second corner. We just go shimmying through these guys. Lost our run, unfortunately. The insane 100% route would probably be absurd, though. I do feel like it would be very difficult. Definitely would not be able to do it like this. The militia don't care about much, but they care about the sheep. Especially with how slow your health regens, it would be very, very difficult. I don't know, um... You'd have to probably play it like the regular insane run, but, um, slow down at certain segments like this. Like, way slow down, rather. That's number four. Uh, this is also, uh, this level features the first and perhaps only uh, appearance of the imp 
Kayla, not to be confused with a similarly named automobile. For those of you who've been wondering why uh, Otis Monday lives on a farm called Knob Cheese Farm. Yeah, I'll take the run there. There's actually, uh, That's five of ten. There's a lot to do in this one. A rich and well-developed backstory. Yes, a rich and well-developed backstory uh, about Otis Monday and... Then you eat his brains because we had to use the hand there. And how he came in and we in it. Wow, that feels really efficient. Really, really efficient. That's a new bit of routing that we were talking about earlier, so I got to practice it right before this run, and it definitely feels really good. Now, at this point, we've gone through both corners of the uh, the beginning. Now we're into the grain side of it. Obviously, you can see they're not very good at the area of farming like they are corn. But what we're going to do is get this... Uh, hippo head in the corner. And then get driving. So at one point in the game, you, uh, <laughs> hopefully, you enter the barn. This is number six, and then seven, eight, the barn, the rest of the game seven and eight are going to be outside of this, uh, Standing in this next corner. area. Nine and ten are going to be in the farmhouse. Crying. Now, originally, uh, this was simply going to be an assault on a farmhouse. Um, but, uh, Moof, I definitely think, um, now that we're optimizing this very fast, like the 100% route is getting optimized very, very quickly, we'll probably be able to start entertaining harder difficulties of it, I think. I'm curious to see how much, uh, once we clean this up, how much the 100% insane would be different. I'm not sure how it how it eventually turned into an entire farm. At this point, we got to go up into that so farmhouse. I originally set it up where there was a farmhouse with layers of defenses around it. Um, and I was trying to set up a pretty open-ended... Uh, open We're going to possess this guy, and then hopefully Stubbs doesn't take too much damage. Um, then we just got to jump for victory. Um, ideally, our guy here doesn't get killed either. And so I'm kind of aiming my head down. Grab that, so we, uh, and now we go running. We make reference during a cutscene in this uh, barn to a famous movie. If you're very young, or just culturally illiterate, eat this guy's brains. <laughs> and now we'll grab number eight. Members of the wide load staff didn't recognize the movie we were referring to. Not going to name names. <laughs> Excellent throw. Once you get number eight, you can immediately cut it and run over here. And now into the farmhouse we go. Farmhouse has number nine on the first floor, number ten on the second floor. So grab that guy. You know, funny thing about those hay bales. There's two gut grenades here. That's interesting. When we first got the hay bale, uh, I don't know that we really use it though. From the artist who did the first pass on the model. Um, the, it was Run over this on. way. The, uh, the straps went around the middle like an equator instead of <sighs> having two straps around the. Uh, they killed the hand. As it is. And to me, this looked totally wrong. You need a hand to actually get this. It doesn't let you get it otherwise. Alright, so we got that one. This is probably the one level where you get to hear Otis the most. Which is good thing. Okay, he shot me twice. Otis does get get to deliver a little more of his his worldview, which is Kill that guy so we can heal a little. Which is unique. And grab number ten. Oof. One of the best parts of the RNG. When the game starts surprising you, uh, when the, the death of the hand really messes me up. All right. So you grab that one off on the get go. There are five in total that we have to get, and they all come at us pretty quick in this level. First half, really. 
mess and then uh, Christopher picked up all my mess. And now this level introduces um, uh, two and a half new enemies. There's red beam scientists, which are like your standard issue cops that we've already seen, but instead with a lab coat. <laughs> And then there are also um, these green beam scientists, like that guy. I try to make them patrol right through the firefight so that a scientist will accidentally hit a robot with a shot or two, and then he'll freak out and go lost in space. So the green beams, these Einsteins, they're a pain, as you can see. They uh, they cause a lot of problems. Ooh, wait, that might be a good problem. Hello. Originally, I wanted to do something. Thank you, Einstein. So we grab those uh, those hippo heads. That's already three out of five, and then we get running. Now, what we're gonna do at this point is just run to the next area. We're gonna need to get a hippo head in the next area, and as well, we're gonna need to have a, a zombie hand. So we're gonna have to make sure we get that all farmed up pretty quick. That guy beat me to the edge, so I had to cut back and move. Not a huge issue. Choke them with gas in this room. Eat this guy's brains immediately. That's that hand we do like. And then we go over here. We're going to meet a scientist. We're hopefully going to just pass right by him. We call him Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Ooh, right over Kevin's head. Um, now we go ahead and grab this hippo head. Possess this guy immediately. And then you hit this button. Once you hit that button, uh-oh. You could come here from the very beginning and watch that guy go in there. Once you hit that button, you eat this guy's brains. And you're right in business. So by eating that guy's brains there, we have a hand, which we're going to need for our fifth and final hippo head in this area. Go ahead and run out into the uh, to the edge of the dam here. And then we throw our hand over this way, and that allows you to just jump our way to victory. Once you get that hippo head, you just go right back over here. And now our goal is to taint the water supply by peeing in it. Our goal here is ideally not to do anything but pee. All we should be doing is sit, sitting back, head kick back, enjoying our time. Um, that only happens though if at the 25% mark the Einstein that has a the, the boomstick, the green circle, he doesn't come up. And if these guys don't bug me, unfortunately he bugged me. <sighs> I've been having really bad RNG with the way the cops are interacting on this level, but we have a gut grenade and we have a hand, so as long as nothing else bad RNG happens, we are set up for the, the rest of the level really well. Contamination levels are at 50% is what the AI just said, we just can't really hear it over this developer commentary, so... Um, I'll try and help out as best as possible. I have to keep looking around every now and then just to make sure that Einstein's not there. If he pushes us into the uh, to the contaminated water, it's a huge setback uh, because it pushes you to the bottom of the level. The reason we keep our head back though is because the cops can actually headshot you. That feels really bad. Nice. I missed the 75% marker entirely, I guess. But all right, that's really good. So we got through there. We have a we have one hand, we have a grenade. We're ready. We don't even need to stop for these guys. There's an Einstein dead center. Got to be careful. Okay. I wanted to hit him so that I could get a boost, but uh, the way he moved around, I couldn't really, I couldn't work with that. Oof, really early jump. Oh, well. If you walk gently to the left, you don't usually get hit very much. All about that serpentine, though. Now, this area used to be a lot more convoluted. You used to have to go through and do a lot of hand acrobatics where you'd throw your hand at the beginning and you'd hit that button. Hopefully, you'd land on the platform first and then you'd hit that button. Jump over here, hit this button, jump down. 
skedaddle on up that tower, hit that button. But uh, one of our runners, Lozy, actually decided uh, to try just running to the end and doing it in reverse. And it turns out, you get that little cutscene there. And then you also can just hit the last one. And immediately cut back. As long as you let the cutscene play, it'll actually just push you through. Um, or the reinforcements will come out so you can push through. So now at this point, we're praying for a great RNG. That's really... That's what we need. That's what we need. We need some good RNG, so hopefully we get it. We're going to go ahead and drop our Zombro off. Um, this is where we really determine who's a bro on our team here. We got to take out all these enemies because we don't want them messing up our zombies. And then we got to make sure... No, sir. Sometimes they're sneaky. Got to make sure you kill three. If there aren't three there, that means they're running off to another area, and that's bad luck. Ooh. Strike. And now at this point, you just kind of position your vehicle so that it looks tantalizing. There it is. And then you see how three of them are zapping. That fourth one's about to start zapping here shortly. And then we're going to hope that during this cutscene that comes up, that our screen starts flashing red. Ideally, if we're flashing red, that means this uh, flying enemy that ha wreaks havoc on all of our uh, our Zombros is hitting us. Ooh, we're flashing. Oh, man. That's really bad. Luckily, he didn't kill our zombie. So it could have been much worse. Our zombie's still gonna run over here. The best case scenario is that those guys with the rocket hit you at your car as you run over the flying guy. In our case, the guys with the rocket hit our guy in the conduit there instead, causing him to get uh, exploded. Now at this point, we're gonna just make sure our zombros don't get uh, don't get got. Look at all this. And we got people everywhere. Bang! I don't know where he came from, but he's gone. Excellent. So that gets us through uh, when the zombie breaks. We've contaminated the water supply, and then right at the end, we exploded the dam. The water's flooded over the town, and they've sent the army. The entire military force is after us. But we're just a massage therapist, guys. Hey, what's up, hero? We're gonna grab that hippo head there. That's number one of two in this area. And then we're gonna make a, make a beeline for the diner. And I'm Patrick Curry, the lead designer in Stubbs. And uh, we're here to talk about the level that we internally call Offender. And, uh, At three. I, I forget what it's actually called in the game, but it's the fourth to last level in the game. It's the level where Stubbs comes back to punch bowl after uh, destroying the How many? I'm going to be short. With the army. It's the first level. I'm running with it. We're going to see where we go with it. But hey, Hero, how you doing today? They have all these awesome weapons. I'm going to bust through that door. We're gonna go ahead and get our second hippo head and two of two for this level. And a bazooka. So the army is a whole lot of fun to possess and use their weapons. So we specifically designed this level. Grab this one right here. Pretty rough. And now this is the only level in the game that has stacked commentary. So unfortunately, you're gonna hear uh, the lead writer and uh, uh, the other guy. Unfortunately, both of them talking simultaneously. You can totally. Use your Ooh. Stuff to Almost your stepped on that landmine. Landmines <laughs> yeah, Gotta be careful. That guy on the on the balcony there, that sniper can really mess your day up. You don't want that. 
yeah, it's just all, they're all the enemies things I ever there. thought they're of enemies that would be fun like to do nice sort of with the zombies. The you, know, and you have your zombies, like the cops are really like, you want to be able to use them for things. They're sort of like, eat this guy's brains, we're farming. And just to be clear, there's nothing full because they thought it was going to be a cakewalk and they're just going to like sit around eating donuts and then once the zombies show up, they're like, oh, crap. Oh, no. And then the That's uh, like, not the best land, but like, we didn't take damage, I guess, so there's that. Right. When did this game come out? This game came out in 2005 on the original Xbox. Built off of the Halo CE engine. This is perfect. We eat this guy. Civilians have the highest value guts. Get that. And then we're gonna just scratch this guy. Don't need his brains. That was extremely efficient. Come on, guy. Oh, can't get that guy. That's bad. Okay. Oh yeah, no, for a 2005 game, this game is built really well. It is definitely, uh, it holds up. A lot of the 2005 games, like even the original Destroy All Humans still looks really good. I feel like we're making excellent time here on the wall. Oh my god. Yeah, excellent time. We take this guy. Get that. This is Matt Sell, sitting here with Alex. This is two uh, of two. Uh, right, yeah, so one of the challenges with... The now, this area in total has seven um, that we'll have to get as we go through. Um, you know, not more guns and pistols. It's easier to think about it, though, if you divide it up by floor. So floor one is only two of them on there. Um, we wanted to get two things across. One was that they are the source of most of the weapons and scientific oddities that you see in the course of the game and that they've still got things hidden away that, that you haven't seen yet. Um, we wound up actually introducing them earlier. Oh, that was really they, clean. They, they were supposed to be um, only in the, the lab, and they wound up being pushed back. To so we grab that one. That's number three of seven. Another thing, there's actually two classes of scientists. You can uh, hear the difference in the audio, actually. Excellent. And, uh, Almost got pushed back on that, but we didn't. The ones with the British accent and the... Uh, Assistant scientists are the ones who have that sort of uh, lab monkey. But yeah, I played this game as a kid, and if you play it casually, you get to hear a really great soundtrack to the game, a lot of fun commentary. It's a really, really exceptional game, um, especially for 2005. They put a lot of care and love into it. Um, definitely recommend. The Xbox copies of the game, though, are very difficult to get. They're relatively expensive. Uh, no, this is my first first ever play. <laughs> but, uh, no, I played it as a kid. I played it, um, I rented it from Blockbuster in 2005. <laughs> so this is number four. Hit that button, and then we keep on running. One of the levels that inspired... You need to have a hand ready for this next area anyway, so it's best to get that guy when you're at that doorway because you have to wait no matter what. Um, they're just kind of there to help you out, but as soon as they take damage, they flip out and start to attack anything and everything in sight, which makes them um, kind of cool in, in, these, in these close quarters fights because you get up. And then what we do is just run with the hand. This area is only accessed right here. You grab that hippo head, that's number five of seven. 
with the, the scientists and take them up a notch. So his, the, 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 the main crazy blaster that he shoots, that red ray, is um, just an extension of the ray, the red ray that- What have I been streaming? Mostly this. I've been mostly just playing stubs. Um, the big knockback I haven't had a whole lot of time in general, so I haven't been streaming as much as I'd like, but I've been streaming a decent bit. Just an extension of, of the boom gun. But what's, 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 what, makes, what makes them cool and different is the fact that they're continuous. So they're much more like the, the inspiration for both those beams was sort of like the, ray, the death ray from the old um, War the, George Powell War of the Worlds where the beam is just like this continuous blast. That was really weird, the way I pushed the hand. And I think that worked out pretty well. Jeez. The, uh, I couldn't get past. So Stubbs got knocked back a little, but that's not too bad. When you get to that Still feel like we're making pretty good time here. Sort of explain. Now I think... Oh my gosh. That was very, very frustrated. I'm having, the game it limits it to 60 right now with the, uh, the Reva tuner tool. Aw. Oh my gosh, I shanked those grenades. Hurry, hurry, hurry. That's all of them. There's five in this level now. Oh my God, it's a zombie. Let's take this car. He didn't need it, obviously. And drive over here. All right, I'm uh, Doug Zartman. I'm the level designer for uh, the level known to us as C40 City Hall. Right. I am Chris Cobb. I'm one of uh, one of the level artists that worked on this level. We get our first hippo head pretty quickly. Game. This is a level that uh, went through many, many iterations. Uh, when oh. I began this, I was uh, looking forward to creating. I would definitely rather hit the fire hydrant than to uh, hit the landmine there. Full of the army having I keep messing that up lately, so that's good. Uh, and so I actually. Um, let's go. That way. This was originally Perfect. The right there, you can actually block your land animation and keep running if you just kind of spam left and right wiggle um, and then land on the slope. Um, it'll kind of like crevice you right between the two slopes and you just keep walking. Very, very nice. Now, we've seen how Stubbs' fart can knock people off of tractors. We've seen it disorient large groups. It's a pretty impacting tool. Um, however, how does it fare against the military? Um, unfortunately, they have a barricaded town up here, and that is a lot harder to deal with, especially on the harder difficulties, but they have a tank that comes barreling at us. Um, all we can really do is pray here, and it worked. <laughs> so they, um, for whatever reason, they can sniff your farts all the way through that. It's very powerful stuff. Where did that go? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm trolling.
So at this point, I'm just going to toss the hand and hope I can get it. Um, the rocket guy seems to be pretty distracted with actual stubs. So we're just going to run over here. That's number two for this level. The neat thing about this, this level is that this is the first, uh, first one where you're, you're... Oh, I thought I died. <laughs> Woo! That was very suspect. All right, so we have two developer commentaries out of five here. So the, the long Let's go ahead and grab number three. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, we're, our what we're going to do for that one is just run along here. Luckily, this one's not hidden. It's very much in line because we have no abilities to grab anything special right now. So, uh, yeah, as Doug was saying, That's number 305. And then we just run past all this stuff here. There's a couple guys that spawn, and depending on if your health regens or not, this can be a dangerous segment um, running through the route that we just did um, compared to the behind the truck, but not bad in that case. Getting all the treads to work accurately and all that was big deal hopefully you can actually see oh. you can't see uh, a lot of the under oh we have three out of five number four is actually the same spot AI as exactly. hippo head number two in the very beginning of the game um except for now it's nighttime the cool thing about this game is that it is a 24 7 or 24 hour cycle if you will uh, you start in the morning you end at night And we got to grab this one here. All right, so this is the uh, the approach to the interior of the city hall. Drive, drive, drive. Um, yeah, when I first... That's number four. <laughs> now, hopefully we get to use this Jeep and grab number five. It's still pretty big, but it was a good three times larger than it is. What we got to do for that is kind of park. There we go. Yeah. Park with a little bit of front lift to it, so that way your zombies run like that. That guy going in front of the potted plant is exactly what we want to see. That way after this cutscene happens, we'll be able to pop back into that jeep and our Zombro will be right next to it. Don't do it, Zombro. Don't go to them. Go to me. Yeah! A lot of landscaping went on here, a lot of... Uh, Excellent. Some... We used to have two statues. And now at this point, you just drive the vehicle like that. Drop your Zombro off on the side of that uh, rock pile. And he'll think he can still get in there, but you just say later and drive out. That was very clean, very well executed. And then we drive like this. Decent Jeep. That was excellent, Jeep, my dude. Drive here. Cleanest I've ever seen. Gracias. And that's one of one in this area. Now we get running. The level designer for C50 End, the interior of the city hall. And I'm Matt Sell. So at this point, we're running through this gauntlet. All these guys are shooting at us. It's the final stand for Andrew Monday in the town of Punchbowl, Pennsylvania. We're going to see our lady Maggie Monday. And Stubbs is not taking no for an answer. And the final stand is these four guys. No, I don't want brains. I wanted. That's fine. We'll just claw them to death. So what we do here is Andrew Monday sets up a force field. We throw two gut grenades at it. We run over Maggie Monday's body. Unfortunately, she's currently dead. We take our zombie head roll out and we bowl. 
We bowling. Oh! 59.23. Let's go. Oh, under an hour by a clean 30. 40 even. Holy moly. Hello, Maggie. Holy moly. What a clean run, folks. Green all the way through. Uh, Stubbs and Maggie just make their way out of the town. We heard it earlier, but we kind of grazed right past it. Uh, they told us they're going to be uh, Xing off this uh, town from the map. And what that means is they're going to be dropping a nuke. Be ready to see two Andrew Mondays. We see the first one running for his life. Stubbs is just pushing off the boat. He doesn't care. There's Andrew one and boop, there's Andrew two. <laughs> And here comes in the fat boy. So Stubbs and Maggie just sail off into the sunset, the nuclear sunset, as best we can tell. Um, and we get to sail off with 53 hippo heads somehow stored in our rowboat, robot. Um, and it's a happy ending. New world record, new personal best, first sub hour. Woo! That's a lot of firsts. That's a lot of big ones. I've never been to Paris, Everything I've went never pretty been well. The doctor will see you now was gold. I didn't realize that. I actually played that really poorly in comparison to what we could have, but that paved with good intention. Clean as a whistle. That was a, that was exceptional. Friends will talk of travel talk and places that they've 